This is Mike Wallace with another television portrait in our gallery of colorful people. Once upon a time in the north country of Japan, there was a little Japanese girl who memorized American songs from phonograph records. In time, she won an Oscar for her first movie, Sayonara, and she became the star of a Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, Flower Drum Song. She is Miyoshi Yumeki, whose art is best described by Time magazine thus. When Miyoshi Yumeki glides on stage to star in her first Broadway show, her first four words capture the house. 10,000 benedictions, sir. In a moment, we'll talk with Miyoshi Yumeki about the realities of her fairy tale career. And now to our story. A recent Time magazine cover story pinpoints the emancipation of the Japanese woman in these phrases. Amid the ruins of burned and bombed out cities, a new generation of young men and women groped for something to believe in. Because the Americans had won the war, everything American was accepted uncritically, from pinball machines and burlesque shows to air conditioning and free thought. The post-war generation traded in their kimonos for blue denims, flared jackets, skin-tight toreador pants. One of the pace setters of this social revolution is our guest, Miyoshi Yumeki. Miyoshi. Yes. Probably <clears throat> the greatest victory in the emancipation of the Japanese woman is the recent royal marriage of Crown Prince Akihito to Michiko Shoda, who was the first commoner to marry an heir to the Japanese throne in some 2,600 years. But according to Time magazine, Michiko Shoda, quote, is a symbol of the hated modern world to Japanese traditionalists. To ladies of the royal court, she is that little upstart who will always be regarded as the girl from outside. What do you think of the marriage? When I first heard it, uh, just shocked to me. No, it's really, to, to all girls, like a Cinderella story. Mm -hmm. A happy and shock or a sad shock? Both. What? A happy shock. But it, it's not the real sad. It's it, some. We look at the prin, prince mm -hmm. uh, as emperor's son, which I've never seen emperor. Uh -huh. I only seen a picture. Yeah. His son, which I never seen either, except uh, now it's uh, in a magazine or a newspaper, mm -hmm. and like a somebody. Uh, uh, that we, we can't even touch, touch him. Yes, I see. And... Well, did you, do you feel that the prince lowered himself much too much in marrying Miss Shoda? No, I think higher than himself. Uh, uh, he made himself higher? Yes. How, why? To understand this is, uh, this is, Big, big things to them to decide mm -hmm. to marry. Uh, a Tokyo newspaper Think. said this about the marriage. It said, Michiko-san may be a commoner, but it is the crown prince who is getting the best of the bargain. Do you agree? That's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm happy because I'm not Michiko. No, I don't you're know. happy because you're not Michiko? No, I'm, oh. I'm happy for them. Oh, I see. Yes, I I'm see. happy for Prince. Back, Very much. Back in the 1st of January in 1946, your Emperor Hirohito publicly announced that he was not a god and that he should no longer be considered as a god. He said it in these words, the bonds between us, meaning himself, and our countrymen have been tied together from first to last by mutual trust and affection. They do not originate in mere myth and legend. They do not have their basis in the fictitious idea that the emperor is manifest God and the Japanese people are race superior to other races and therefore destined to rule the world. Do you remember his saying that? I didn't, I didn't remember any word he said. Why? Because uh, I, I, I heard it there when he uh, made a speech. Yes. But how would I think it was emperor? What do you mean? 
Well, I never, never, never had been done. You know? You'd never yeah. heard his voice before. No, nobody in Japan. Uh huh. And suddenly, uh, I heard his voice. So he is Emperor Hirohito. I said no, it it can be. So uh, the words, uh, the words he used, which uh, that very high, that but very difficult for us to understand. I see, I see. And I was, I was young. <laughs> did, did it make you sad to have this legend destroyed? For a long time, I, I believe it wasn't him. That it wasn't actually he who had spoken? Yes. And that somebody yes. else was saying it yes. for him? Yes, yes. But uh, the proof that that was Emperor Hirohito, and I heard voice in news, much, much later. I see. And it was the same voice. Miyoshi, do you think of yourself as an old-fashioned old fashioned Japanese girl bound <coughs> by ancient customs, or are you the new modern Japanese woman who runs her career and runs her own life? I was raised in an old-fashioned family, modern way. My parents, a very old-fashioned, mm -hmm. but children, uh, we have nine, eight sisters and brothers. Eight of you. And they're modern, modern outside. When they go to school, yes. and go to see their friends, mm -hmm. and come home, it's parents' way. So we have a half and a half. It must be very difficult for Japanese children who are yes. modernized outside the home, and yet they have to... Yes, but it, that become a natural way. Uh -huh. Just get up early in the morning and pray the God with the whole family. Yes. And serve breakfast before us and see the many... I take a custom from my mother. Yes. Let me, let me ask you this. You were 13 years old when World War began, the war between Japan and the United States. Yes. What did you do during the war years? I was making rice. You mean in the fields? Yes. You See. actually worked in the fields? Oh, yes, for a long time. First, uh, I, I was just beginning to take English lessons. Mm -hmm. And uh, six months, and uh, they finished teaching English. And... Uh, you mean they stopped it completely yes, during completely. the war? Yes, completely. Did you did you understand what was going on? Did you uh, did you hate America? No, I didn't hate. I didn't. I just hate a war because I I was fighting with Hungary. Fighting with hunger. Oh yes, hunger. yes, yes. And I was just wishing when the when the uh, war will end today or tomorrow. But did Just, you have any brothers who were in the Japanese army or navy? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> was, was Red Cross. Red Cross? Uh, Red Cross. Uh, Doctor? No, he was a nurse. Oh, uh, an orderly. Uh, it's a, a medical corpsman. Yes, he was. I two see. of them. Two of them? Yes. But as far as you were concerned, you felt no real participation and a sense of Japan was going to lick the world and we have to beat the Americans? Can't. Can't? No, we know, we knew it. And when it started, we knew it's, it's impossible. And uh, even I was young, and I, I thought uh, war will end it in a week. Yes. I think week. some of us felt that way, too. Do you remember seeing your first American? Yes. When? How? Uh, about Six o'clock, uh, five o'clock in the morning, uh, when uh, the many ships came into my hometown. After the war. After the war. Yes. And first impression was just beautiful, because I used to live on up in the hill, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know how many boats or ships, yes. but all beautiful light, green and blue and red and uh -huh. all. And suddenly I heard a speaker, English, the first real loud English I heard <laughs> with the music. 
some jazz. They are playing a record, yeah. I think, and speaker. And, and you felt no, you felt no, no hatred for them. I mean, after all, these were the people who had killed hundreds of thousands of Japanese. They had dropped the atom bomb. You had been told for years that we were your enemies, and still no, none of that feeling. No, because uh, I don't know about soldiers' feeling. Even the soldiers, they had a family and wives mm -hmm. and children. And let's see, <laughs> before the war, I used to collect the American movie stars' picture yeah. and uh, Bing Crosby's and records. I had uh, hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. Because I think my brother and sister is very modern, and <laughs> my <clears throat> Miyoshi, tell me this: you seem I to be. I couldn't hate them. What's that? You, and you saw so you couldn't hate them. I couldn't hate them because I cut this Tracy Ramore, somebody is beautiful girl, and uh, Cary Grant, or some <laughs> American stars pictures. So they're nice people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I connect with them. You connected Cary Grant and Dorothy <laughs> Lamour with the soldiers and the sailors. Tell me this. You seem to be... It's very difficult for me to see a person like yourself who seems so reserved coming here to the United States and getting into one of the businesses that is the most competitive and the toughest business, one of the most difficult businesses in the world, show business. How did you first come here? Uh, I worked there 10 years, uh, not enough rest. So I thought I, I take a vacation, two month vacation, come here and rest for a while. Rest in the United <laughs> States, uh huh. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, see the old uh, uh, nice big studios and the orchestra. Yes. And uh, some four freshmen or high lobes. <laughs> Uh, just to relax seeing American real show business, what they're doing. And my plan was to go back there in two months and buy all American style dress. Yes. And new mm -hmm. fashion. And come back and absolutely stun everybody with what an Americanized person you uh, would be when you went back to Japan. No, we're doing a popular song over there. Yes. Um, Tell me this. You are, right now, co-starring with Pat Suzuki in Flower Drum Song. We're going to move now well ahead into what you're doing right now. And you know, it would seem that in that kind of a situation, here are two young, attractive girls with equal parts competing for attention. You'd think that that would create a real rivalry between the two of you. But the production supervisor of your show is quoted in Time Magazine as saying this, I dread to think of another show with two principals running nip and tuck like this one. But here you see no rivalry. They have a genuine friendship for each other. I don't see why we have to fight because we have two different parts. She doesn't want my part. I don't want her part. Mm -hmm. And I didn't write the story. And we're just uh, doing what they give us. Yes. And. Uh, we come in the time, and she always asks me, that I wish I, I like to see Japan. Mm -hmm. Are you very good friends with her? Or do you feel as that, 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 that she is more American than Japanese? Oh, she, she's uh, American, yes. And she wants to know uh, the Japan now. And I th we are very good friends. Doesn't mean we talk all day long, the problem. We have no problem because we don't give each other problem. You don't exchange problems? No. You don't gossip about your problems? No, together. only we talk about, uh, I, wish, I wish you have a little more money. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a universal it. problem. Yes. <laughs> Miyoshi, in a moment, I'm going to ask you, I know that you have married an American, and I'm going to ask you to talk with me a little bit about that. I have been talking. I uh, know about, about <laughs> marrying an American, oh. I mean. You see, according to an ancient Japanese custom, 
Every woman is supposed to tread the path of the three obediences, to her father before marriage, to her husband when she's wed, to her son if she becomes a widow. The Japanese wife, according to this saying, the Japanese wife needs no religion. Her husband is her sole heaven. And in a moment, I want to find out if you feel this way toward your American husband. I'm and I'll be, and I'll be back for Miyoshi Yumeki's answer in just a minute. And now back to our story. Miyoshi Yumeki, as I say, an old Japanese saying says, the Japanese wife needs no religion. Her husband is her sole heaven. Do you feel that way about your American husband? American or Japanese, if the wife is not like me, I'm, I'm, I'm working every night. Mm -hmm. And old fashion in Japan, just get married about 16 years old. Yes. And uh, nothing but husband and yes. raising children. Yes. And uh, I don't, I don't. Which do you like better? Would you rather be old fashioned and have just husband and raising children? Or do you like Sometimes old fashion is good and sometimes it's not fair not fair to even sometimes if if they don't even own Japan in my own country my uh, the husband and wife many times don't get along well mm -hmm. but uh, they just stay together forever yeah doesn't mean once uh, they never fight of course and uh, what qualities let me ask you this have you found qualities? I don't think I made the sense. Well, well let's, let's see if we can, uh, if we can. What qualities have you found in your American husband that you might not have found in a Japanese husband? Is that a sensible question? Let's put it another way. Let's start a, from a difference. Are there problem? Are there any problems in your marriage that arise because you? are from a different background from your husband? I think the most, uh, it's not a real problem, because this you could learn. Uh, I speak uh, more English than before, yes. especially after I got married. And uh, I want to, sometimes I want to explain something. Yes. Even my husband wants to explain to me something. Yes. Sometimes I take wrong. And uh, like you, you have to explain to me that about sure. 10 times. And uh, when you marry to American person, yes. and we have some important things to talk about. And I don't really get idea. I, surely. The and idiom is a little bit different, and it's a little bit difficult, I'm sure, from time yes, to time. And my, uh, the American husband wouldn't get really, I uh, don't know what I'm talking about. I can't express yes. everything. When you um, go home to Japan for a visit, do you expect to find that your friends or relatives will resent the fact that you married outside your race? No. Not at all? No. Your mother was I'm quite happy? happy? Oh, yes. I'm, she's happy as I am. Uh -huh. Yes. You haven't been back now since you made sayonara. That's right. When do you plan to go back? After this show is over. I wonder, because you told me just before you went on the air, I understand that you don't want to go back until you have a baby to show to your mother. Well, I'd like to go back before. <laughs> <laughs> My mother wants to say it. <laughs> Maybe I don't know when. It's been the custom, I'm told, in traditional Japanese marriages, for the husband to enjoy uh, almost total freedom. He is the master. He can come and go without explanation. He can spend his evenings without his wife. Yes, no, I used to work in a night, uh, night club singing with a band, as a band singer. Yes. And uh, mostly the customer in a club is married, mar married man with that wife. And I was beginning to wonder, every time I sing to them, I wonder if I could be happy like that. 
Do you? But not everyone, no. Not every Japanese husband no, does that. Because the wife was ju wife just wait. But if he goes too much, why well, they fight? Mm -hmm. Like everybody else. Do you permit your husband that same kind of freedom now? It's not freedom. I don't call it freedom. What do you call it? To husband go out. It's not free. Freedom. I think uh, some uh, like I'm not good. Or is that I? Uh, I understand what you're saying. I know. It's not a question of freedom, it's that you simply are not sufficiently... It's just between us. I don't know. You, you're a man, you know it. <laughs> well, now, wait. Uh, well, I, I was going to say that it's not freedom, that it's uh, evidently if a, if, a, if a husband doesn't want to spend that much time with his wife, then it's, then it's not really a very happy situation. Is that what you, what you meant? I think that, especially in Japan, like a, like a, one of the customers of that. It's simply one of the customs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go out and uh, enjoy. But after the war, they're beginning to bring wives at the dinner. Mm -hmm. And I think it's yeah. wonderful. I understand that you're going to become an American citizen. Yes. Why? Why? Because I want to. Why? You will have to renounce your Japanese citizenship? Uh, I, I think in the three years I could become American citizen. Three or five years. I think three years. I have to take an examination. Mm -hmm. And whoever I marry, I, I belong to him. You belong to him and therefore you want to take the same citizenship? Yes that he takes. Again, I find it so difficult to see that this reserved person who has done so well in show business, which is, as I said earlier, so competitive, who helped you, Miyoshi? Certainly you didn't do it all by yourself. No, I think people helped me. Who? The what? people who are watching TV when I work in some place and that people come to see the show. And I, I know it's not me and people, and I believe in a God, too. You believe in a God, too? M my I, are my you a, own God. Your own God? Yes. Are you a Buddha or a Christian? I was raised in Buddha. And because I was so young, uh, six years old, and every Sunday, and my grandparents, take me to Buddha temple. And I listened to the priest's speech, and I thought it was most beautiful. And when I was so young, and uh, so strong to in my mind, mm -hmm. something I could never forget. Do you still practice Buddhism? No, there's no practice. When I, I don't pray every day, and things. When I'm happy, I thank them. And when I'm sad, I need them help. Mm -hmm. And I think they watch me all the time. I think most of us probably mm -hmm. treat our separate gods that way. Miyoshi, I surely thank you for coming and telling us a little bit about yourself. Thank you very much. Continued good luck to you. Thank you. I'll be back in a moment with a footnote to the Miyoshi Yumeki story. In modern Japan, six million women, not unlike Miyoshi Yumeki, are now wage earners. There are 26 women in the national legislature, 360 women in local assemblies, and one woman mayor. A major social revolution. Sounds to me as though Japanese women are beating American women at their own game. Hopefully, they are still as essentially feminine as Miss Yumeki. We thank Miyoshi Yumeki for adding her portrait to our gallery, one of the people other people are interested in. Mike Wallace, that's it for now.